your avenue to the kingdom. And if you can't get to the kingdom, you can't get to the wheel. If we have unforgiveness in our hearts, we're out of the kingdom. We're out of the wheel. There, there cannot be a, a flow. We can go out and take matters into our own hands. But when you allow God, somebody say, I'm allowing. I'm allowing. Love, that's what love looks like. Love suffereth long. I'm not going to give up on you. It says, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity. Somebody say love. love. I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. In other words, what this is saying is, I pray. I pray. I pray without an understanding, with tongues of angels. And I pray with an understanding, with tongues of men. Look at verse 2. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, somebody said love. love. I am Nothing. Let's look at verse 2, and we're going to break it down in, in two parts, part A and part B. Okay? The first part, the first part is, and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge. Everybody with me? That's simply saying, I pray. Right? I have tapped into the spirit through prayer. My gift of prophecy is stirred. And when I prophesy, I come to pass. I have tapped into the mysteries. I have word of knowledge. I can tell you your zip code. I can re reveal the hidden and unknown things of God. I can pull out the, the best revelation out of scripture. Wow, I've never heard it like that before. Or you can say it like this, I've been in this thing for a while and I know God. All of these things, these gifts, are in operation in my ministry. I found a scripture, and of course I've expound on it to give a little more depth to uh, what the Apostle Paul was writing. And when people use this scripture, they're really going into the depth of, um, of revelation. Because if you understand Romans, um, the 10th chapter, 10 through 11, you'll understand what the Apostle Paul was really talking about. But it says, gifts come without a call or repentance. Isn't that right? Let's go to Romans chapter 10, verse 1, because, you know, when we begin to operate in these, in these type of uh, gifts and you begin to see the Spirit of God moving, uh, it, it, it puts you in a, in a position to be comfortable. Everybody see that? Let's go to Romans, the 10th chapter. How many people, if you were operating in, in, um, in the gift of prophecy and prayer and revelation and knowledge, you would kind of feel like, um, I, I kind of I think I know what's going on. I think I kinda, I'm kind of in there. How many people think you would feel like that? I know I, yeah. 
I would kind of feel like I, I'm, I haven't tapped into some, you know, the, the gifts are operating. Yep. The, the, you know, the, the spirit is moving and I'm grabbing the revelation out of the word. I tell you. My brethren, or oh, it says, brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Everybody see that? It says, for I bear them record, listen to this, that they have a, a zeal of God. I, I, I know him. He's the God of my forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I mean, it's been passed down to us. We, we know how God moves. Listen to what it says, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness... And going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Somebody say zeal. zeal. All right. That's Romans chapter 10. Just turn one page over to Romans chapter 11. And we're jumping, but I want to show you something. You remember this? These people have had contact with God from generation to generation, right? Look at verse 29, Romans chapter 11. What did it say? For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. These, these are people that understand the tabernacle. They know how it's laid out. They understand the precepts and the principles of God. They had a zeal. But they end up establishing their own righteousness because they had the rituals and the routine part figured out. They had the works figured out. But they didn't really know God. That's why he told uh, in Matthew the chapter, in the seventh chapter, uh, they would say in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not done all these things? spiritual things in your name and he's going to say I never knew intimate and I told you the word knowledge comes from knowing you see knowledge comes from knowing but you have to understand there are two types of knowledge there's a book knowledge and there's a knowledge of knowing you see yeah, I'm, I'm knowledgeable of the word. I can read a book on someone's life in here today and tell you everything about them. But until I meet them, I don't really know them. And Jesus said, yeah, you, you did all these things. You were in the book. You knew the book. But we didn't know each other. We didn't have a relationship. Somebody said no relationship. No relationship. Full, of zeal. Full of zeal. All right. Everybody with me? Let's look, at, let's look at part B. It says, and though I have all faith, right, so that I could remove mountains. Somebody said remove mountains. Remove and have not charity. Somebody said love. love. Here it is again. I am nothing. nothing. Watch this. Do y'all remember in Matthew chapter 17, verses 20 and 21, where Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove. Now, Corinthians just said, though I have the faith to remove mountains. He said, if you have the faith of a mustard seed and say unto this mountain remove hence to yonder place and it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible unto you look at verse 21 it says how be it this kind goeth not out but by prayer and Amen. fasting so in other words what the writer is saying here I fast I've already made the point that I pray I pray with the tongues of an angel 
with angels and the tongues of men. I pray. I'm operating in spiritual gifts. I'm operating in prophecy and word of knowledge. I'm tapping into the deep things of God. But if I don't have love, I am nothing. And now we read, and it takes us a little bit farther, and say, I even fast. You see that? I'm fasting. In other words, I pray, I prophesy, I can reveal the hidden mysteries of the word of God. I fast. Go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 13 if you didn't leave, if you left. Look at verse 3. Yeah, I, I pray. I prophesy. I reveal hidden mysteries of the word. I fast. Look at this. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profited me nothing. How in the world can you give of your goods and give your body to be burned and that not be loved? Think about 9-11. We, in this natural sense, think that being charitable means to give. Though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor. This text here is showing us that there are people that gave goods but were not charitable. But in this world society today, they say when you're being charitable, it's because you're giving. According to the Bible, giving of your goods doesn't make you charitable. Yeah, I'm going to pay my, I'm going to, I'm going to be a blessing. But, uh, it's got to be something in it for me. Even just a sense of feeling good. Some people do good because it feels good to them. That's still selfish. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. I'm going to throw a wrench in it. It says, now unto him. Oh, we love this scripture. <laughs> Ephesians 3.20. Somebody said King James Version. King James Version. It says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above. Oh, we love this scripture. All that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. How can we do all these things that we have found comfort in? I'm a Christian. And some of us, if we pray for 10 minutes at home, we feel like we've gone above and beyond. And I understand why, because a lot of people aren't praying. If we do a six hour fast, we skip breakfast. Oh my. We deep that day. Oh, my. oh we deep. And so we found comfort in these things, and we think that these reasonable service things are things that we're doing to go to second mile. <laughs> and we find comfort in it. There are people that have found comfort in the fact that their spiritual gift is operating, that they can prophesy and it come to pass. That they're operating in spiritual realms. Some people find comfort in that I'm a good person. I give, but I give, I, I, I'm always giving but still come short of being nothing. Out of all these things, we still come short, and we are nothing without love. So what is love? How do we identify love? How do we recognize love? I was, the Lord has really been dealing with me, and the first place